Well, Joe Biden swept Super Tuesday, almost. American Samoa's six delegates will actually go to another candidate. And he's someone that I guarantee you most Americans have not heard of before tonight. His name is Jason Palmer. You see him right there on the screen. Harry, how did Jason Palmer pull off this major upset or minor upset, however you yeah, want to look at it? <laughs> well, I mean, look, I call it a major upset. You look at the board, you look at the map, you got Joe Biden blue all over the place, except right down here, these little dots. And if we click on them, you'll see we got the American territories can't vote in a general election, but can and vote, in fact, vote in a primary. And we, we go right there green, American Samoa. I want you to look at the vote tally here. 51 to 40. Not very much, that's 11 ahead, but hey, that will work. Now, here's the thing that's so interesting to me about American Samoa, Abby. If you go back four years ago and you go to 2020, you'll see that Michael Bloomberg also won in American Samoa with about 50% of the vote. Of course, there is one big difference between 2020 when Mike Bloomberg won it and 2024 when Jason Palmer won it. And that is that Mike Bloomberg spent hundreds of millions of dollars in his campaign. Jason Palmer, to be perfectly frank with you, even though I love politics, I had never heard of him heard of him until tonight. So Jason Palmer able to beat Joe Biden in American Samoa. Maybe he went to the voters one by one, because given how few votes there, you could do it that way. Hey, Abby. look, all it takes is like a quick little $2,000 flight, and you can win a primary. Perfect. That seems like a good return on investment to me. Harry Enton, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Laura? Well, you know, Palmer's biography holds him up as a political outsider. He called himself an education and tech entrepreneur who has previously worked at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And you know what? He joins me now. It's so nice to meet you, Mr. Palmer. Congratulations on your victory. Are you surprised so about tonight's win? I, I have to admit, I am surprised that we won in American Samoa, but uh, to uh, what was said just a few minutes ago, I didn't actually fly to American Samoa. I actually did multiple virtual town halls and spoke with the, the nationals there because you may not know, but people in American Samoa are not necessarily automatically American citizens. They are American nationals. I spoke to them about their needs for health care, for education, for real action on climate change. And I do think that it was uh, my team did a fantastic job, Miracle and her team. We hired local people on the ground to do grassroots effort, and it really paid off. I mean, it certainly did. And you heard the conversations that Bloomberg spent hundreds of millions of dollars. It sounds like you strategically maybe zoomed it in in this instance. Why did you focus on this particular area? And and why have people not, and what is your, really, what's your response to what's going to oftentimes be maybe a punchline um, about not having heard of you before now? Yeah, well, first of all, it's very hard to get on the national radar when you're a lesser known candidate. Uh, but in my particular industry in education technology, I'm very well known. Um, and it actually, you know, my views on YouTube, more than a million people have viewed my campaign videos on YouTube. I've been covered by BBC News, Politico, really proud to be here on CNN. But as a new candidate, uh, it's actually very difficult to, to break through. Uh, I didn't actually focus on American Samoa. I actually was focused on Colorado, Vermont, Minnesota, and American Samoa. As you know, there were many elections tonight, mm -hmm. and we were focused on multiple states. This happened to be the one where, you know, I, I'm just proud to say my local team did a fantastic job. And I think our message really resonated about focusing on education, healthcare, and climate change. Look, I'm not taking anything away from you. I mean, I did not get a delegate tonight, and many Americans who might be wondering and, and wondering more about your campaign are looking at the, the at least it, it worked in American Samoa. But let me ask you about the criticism that you have given to, frankly, both sides. It's one of the reasons you wanted to throw your hat into the ring. President Biden is well on his way to winning the Democratic nomination. Um, you have been essentially the spoiler for him in having a sweep for Super Tuesday. So what do you want to say to him and also former President Trump tonight about the rest of this campaign season? Yeah, well, the number one thing is that the most important thing that we can do as Democrats is defeat Donald Trump at the polls this November. 
part of why I entered the race was to make sure that Biden campaigns vigorously. You know, I've been out on the campaign trail in New Hampshire, Nevada, Colorado, et cetera, and the Republicans are out in full force. If we don't campaign equally vigorously, we're going to lose in November. When people say we're going to be sleepwalking into a Trump election, it's for real. So I'm running to energize young voters and also center left, center right people with a positive vision of what we can do in the next four years. If Joe Biden's just talking about Donald Trump and he's just talking about foreign policy and foreign wars, that's not going to win in November. you got to have a clear positive agenda. We have 25 positions on our website around conscious capitalism, the new collar economy, modernizing our government. I'm a technology entrepreneur, and I think it's very important that we bring advanced technologies to government so that it treats its citizens more like premier customers. Um, and I do think that message is resonating across the country. So what I would recommend to President Biden is, first of all, I, I honor you for your 50 years of tremendous service to our country. I do think it's time to pass the torch to the next generation of Americans, whether that be me, whether that be governors like Gretchen Whitmer, Jared Polis, uh, governor of California, Gavin Newsom. There's many younger people who are ready to take that torch, who are great leaders in our party, and make sure that Donald Trump doesn't win this November. I think that Joe Biden can kind of be like George Washington, be that transitional figure, pass it to the next generation, and that would be the best thing he could do to retire as a great American statesman. I heard the word running as well. Are you continuing to run in your campaign even after tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I'm focused next on Arizona. I'm close to releasing a 12-page white paper on how we can finally solve our immigration problem, both at the border and just reforming our immigration system overall. Uh, we need to move to a more talent-based immigration system, more like Canada or Australia. We want the world's best and brightest to come to America, and we need a dramatic surge in border judges not just border agents, but actually judges who can adjudicate people's claims quickly and determine whether they are valid asylum claims or whether they need to be guest workers or whether they need to be sent home. And this doesn't need to be a political football that gets passed back and forth between the two parties.